Hi everyone, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com and today I want to talk to you about how to start a room makeover. This is one of the questions I get asked all the time when making over a room or doing a reno on a space in your home and it's where do I even start? So what I thought I would do is we're working on this guest bedroom project downstairs in our own home. So that's why I'm in a different spot here. It's kind of echoey because we're still working on it right now. But I thought it would be fun to just take you along from start to finish on this little makeover. And as I go along, give you tips to make over your own space from start to finish. I'm going to also put all of these steps in a blog post on my blog, so make sure to check out the description box below after you've watched the video. This is how I do it. I am not an interior designer by trade, however, I have a graphic design background. I have lots of experience doing runouts like this, and this is just how I really like to do it. It makes sense for me, so I hope for some of you you'll find it helpful. Okay, so let's get started. So step number one when you're making over a room in your home is first you really need to identify both the physical and the emotional needs of the room that you're making over. So in our space, we're doing a guest bedroom in our basement. So the physical needs are it needs a place for our guests to sleep, a place for them to put clothes, not too many, just a few, a place for us to put any essentials that they might need like some towels, bath towels maybe a little basket of guest goodies, toiletries, things like that, and also some really nice lighting. As far as the emotional needs of the room, that's something that I really love to focus on in a space. What helps sometimes is to identify three descriptive words of how you want to feel in your room after it's made over. So in this case, how I want our guests to feel in the room after they've stayed here. So in this space that we're making, the three describing words that I want this room to encompass are cozy, romantic, and a little unexpected. So I want to make this room feel really cozy and kind of traditional and just kind of almost a little bit shabby chic. I think that would be fun for a guest bedroom in our home, but then add a few unexpected elements that are just going to add some interest to the space. So when you identify both your physical and emotional needs for your room, as well as choose three describing words for your space, that's gonna help you in step number two, which is gathering inspiration. So this is one of my favorite parts of any room makeover, basically just gathering tons and tons of photos of rooms that you love that kind of go with the vibe you're going for for your own space and just starting to get inspiration for your own space that way. So the tool that I like to use for this and a lot of you I know like to use is Pinterest. So that's an online tool. Most of you know what it is. You can just find a ton of images, but just by searching keywords in the search and you can pin them to virtual boards on your own Pinterest account. So for my space, I'm just pinning lots of bedroom images that kind of have that cozy, romantic, and slightly unexpected feel. I'm also starting to see that I'm liking the colors of blush pink, I'm liking copper, I'm liking gray, I'm liking that combo together. And that just really helps me to narrow down what I'm looking for for this space. So yeah, just start pinning images of other rooms. You can also do this physically. You can cut out magazine photos of rooms that you love that are similar to the room that you want to create. You can also use other websites like house.com, that's a good one, um, and you can start just gathering inspirational images. And after you've created a whole Pinterest board or a physical pin board of inspirational images of your room, you can just kind of start to identify a common thread in all of those images. Usually you'll be able to see what color scheme you're loving for your room. Usually you'll be able to see what sorts of furniture shapes you like, and that just really helps narrow down the choices that you're going to need to make. And that is going to help you with step number three, which is creating a mood board for your room makeover. I also love this step. I've created lots of mood boards. They're basically just a collage photo of all the elements that you want to include in your space. So you could include color swatches that you like. You could include pictures of furniture that you're liking for the space. You could include even some of your inspirational room photos on this mood board just to create sort of a basis that you're going to go by when you do your next step, which is shopping and finding your item. So I use Photoshop to make my mood boards and I just basically copy and paste images I find online and bring them into Photoshop. If you want a more detailed tutorial on how I use Photoshop to make mood boards, please let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to do a more in-depth video tutorial on that. Otherwise, you can use other photo collage programs that are free like Adobe Spark. 
um, and things like that to create a mood board or even just paint the program paint on your computer to create a mood board. You could do it old school, you could gather your clippings and you could paste them onto a physical piece of paper and create a mood board that way. Uh, I really like this step because it really just helps me narrow down and see visually my color scheme, uh, the shapes of the furniture that I need. And then the next step, step number four, is make a floor plan. Now I've left out this step in the past. I'm such a visual person, I'm such a feelings person, and sometimes practical things and measurements just escape me. This is definitely an important part of starting a room makeover because you really need to make sure any of the furniture that you find or you purchase is going to fit in your space. Measure your entire room, draw out a floor plan either on paper or on the computer. I use Adobe Illustrator for mine. Make sure it's to scale and then you can draw and cut out little pictures of the potential furniture you want to put in the space or again you do it on your computer and put it in just to make sure everything fits because there has been way too many times where I thought a piece of furniture would definitely fit in my space and it was just too big or the scale was just off or I couldn't fit it with the table that I wanted, et cetera, et cetera. So drawing out a floor plan and making sure that you know the dimensions of your room, that you know the width and the depth of it, that you know the height of your ceilings, all of that is really gonna help you make sure that your makeover works in the end. And the second last step before starting every makeover, step number five is creating a shopping list of items that you need for your space. So when you're looking at your mood board, you're looking at your inspiration pictures, you're looking at your dimensions of your room, all of that stuff is gonna help you to create a shopping list of items that you need for your space. Now I am a huge fan of using what you have for starters. So with your mood board in mind, you might be able to shop your own home. Other pieces in your house that you're using elsewhere might work in this new room. You can also look at non-traditional places like buy and sell pages, you could look at thrift stores, you could look at, you could find curbside finds and paint them. Uh, don't forget the power of paint, the power of DIY, and that you can make something old look new again and be the right color and texture for your new room. So on your shopping list, you're going to want to add things like large furniture pieces like beds and sofas and chairs, and you're gonna also wanna think of smaller things like uh, lighting, so ceiling lighting as well as table lighting. You're going to want to think about drapery, small accessories, and plants. And the last and final step for starting your room makeover is setting your budget and shopping. So setting your budget, the not so fun part of this step. So just identify how much money you have to spend. Again, using things that you already have that you could maybe DIY a little bit or work or use in your space is going to save you money. Buying used is going to save you money. So make sure you have a budget that's also going to really narrow down all the choices that you have, which actually I find helpful. If you had all the money in the world and could choose from any sort of furniture, that would probably actually be harder. So a budget does help you narrow down your choices really well. And like I said, you could shop at big box stores and things like that, but don't forget about the less obvious places like thrift stores, antique stores, buy and sell pages, and places like that. So in our case, we are getting a bed sponsored by The Brick, so they're gonna send us a headboard for this space. You can see it back here. And when you're shopping, keep your eye open for a wow piece or a muse piece. And I find finding something that you really, really love that is really interesting, so maybe it would be a really neat piece of fabric, some wallpaper, some throw pillows, something with lots of pattern and texture and possibly color if you like that. Um, that's going to really help you choose all the other elements in the room. So in my case, when I was shopping around for this kind of cozy, romantic, slightly unexpected room makeover, I found this gorgeous wall mural that you can see behind me. So it's this huge oversized blush pink peonies and roses with gray leaves. And that really helped me nail down my color scheme. So once you find something like that, you'll be able to base your other purchases around it. And that's also helpful too. And it's always fun to have something really bold in a room, I think, even if it's just one thing. One last tip is people often think about paint color first when they're making over a room. And I think it should be one of the last things because you wanna match it to potentially your big inspiration piece. So in my case, the wallpaper, you wanna match it to um, maybe some fabric that you're buying or 
you know, a big furniture piece. So leave that till closer to the end so you can really get that to match everything else in the space and everything's really gonna coordinate. Okay, so those are the steps that I take when I start a room makeover. I really hope you found those helpful just to have that really practical step-by-step -step guide when you're starting your own makeover. Let me know in the comments below what you think of those steps, which ones you've tried already, which ones you may have forgotten to use when you're doing your own room makeover. And make sure to stay tuned to see what we do with our guest bedroom and how it turns out in the end. Thanks so much for watching my video today. I hope you found it useful. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more DIY and decor ideas. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.